All right, I'm excited to be here. Uh, I'm excited to be presenting uh, today the uh, Trino C Sharp.NET client. Uh, my name is George Fisher. I am from Microsoft. And I know not, all, not all, those of you who love .NET and are familiar with it, they're going to be very interested. And those who aren't, I'm going to still try to keep that as interesting as possible and exciting as I can. All right. So what is this? This is a Trino.NET C Sharp client library that we are open sourcing from Microsoft. Um, it is .NET standard 2.0, which means it's compatible with all your favorite .NET framework and .NET core. Um, which is which is going to be very flexible. It has full ADO.NET implementation, uh, NuGet packaging, and there's been a lot of people over the years who have contributed to contributed to this. Uh, and it originally started six years ago, amazingly, as a Presto client with David Lau, who's credited there, who said, "I wrote a little bit of code to query Presto. Let's let's work on this." And that was it's just turned into a project that wouldn't die. So it has been great to see. Um, it's um, it's it's been great to get it to this point, and thanks to a bunch of other people who have tested in their production scenarios, and all the people who helped architect it, Oleg Ruslanovic, Ishan Dmitri. All right, so let's jump into this. Um, when we we're building, a, so what happened is we we took this code and we'd had it internally for a long time, and we said, well, what do we really want to do to make a really good client for for .NET, and what are the things we really need? Um, uh, so we looked, because we had a bunch of other clients we were using at the time, and also I'm very familiar with Python and Java clients, so we want to take the best of best of, best of of those. So what's important is it has to be fast, responsive, it has to be asynchronous, and what we, what do we love? why do we love Trino? Because it's snappy. Snappy is important, so we did a bunch of perf testing surrounding how responsive this was over both short and long-running long long -running queries. So we wanted the responses to be immediate, and big data to come back just as fast as the Java client. .NET type support had to be really thorough, all the complex types, so you don't have to do any conversion, anything yourself. Uh, date time precision support, because that really mattered to us. System data, data types like data table. Auth authentication flexibility is really important in clients. So Azure has specific authentication requirements, which are different to the other clouds. And sometimes teams have different de dependencies on different versions of libraries in, in .NET. So authentication flexibility and oh, is really important. As I mentioned already, ADO.NET implementation, which is somewhat well-defined in some places, not. So we had to do that a good job, a thorough job that's compatible with everything that expects those interfaces. We really wanted a streaming client. so. Um, I know you can adjust the page size on the server side, but you could also, but well, this client allows you to read ahead into a customizable buffer size, which is very important because a lot of the time we're finding people were waiting at, um, waiting on their paging and wanted to be able to page ahead. Full session support, we love sessions. A lot of clients, a lot of integrations with Trino did not have full sessions so that you couldn't maintain your session over multiple executions. So we wanted to make that trivial for people to support along with parameterized, parameterized query support. And of course, in .NET, reduce DLL hell. So reduce the dependencies. And currently the dependencies of this are only Newton soft JSON and uh, logging, which probably can both be eliminated in time. Oh, and also it looks like the Trino Java client from a code point of view, the classes are named the same wherever possible. The structure of the code is similar wherever possible. So hopefully it will not be too unfamiliar to people. So what is the architecture of this thing? Well, um, if you have your .NET application, you want to be able to, you can either use the ADO.NET approach, which is the most familiar to people who write code in .NET, which then calls back into the Trino client, or if you want that more Java experience, that the similar experience to Java, more direct, you can talk directly to the Trino client and you can, uh, it is fairly similar experience there. Um, authentication is optional in order to reduce the dependencies on auth libraries, which can be very, very specific for security requirements or other things. So let's jump into our exciting demo here. Um, so when I was thinking about this, um, I was thinking, what is the best way to demonstrate um where's my window 
Here it is. Um, what is the best way to demonstrate .NET integration? What is the most fun integration with .NET that I can come up with? Oh, they lost our thing. There we go. What is a and the answer here was to do a integration with Unity. So Unity Game Engine. Uh, uses .NET as the C Sharp as a scripting language, so I have integrated the Trino client into um, into .NET. So it's into into Unity. So here, what we have here is I'm using the ADO.NET pattern that those who are it's probably a bit small to see on the screen, but Trino connection is a DB connection. Trino command is the executor, um, and then if I go over to here, and I have my query here, I'm actually pulling three columns from um, TPCDS store sales. And if I run this here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to visualize that TPCDS table in three dimensions um, pulled from Trino using my client. So here we have our, you know, we have our Trino standing up here. Um, we've got to wait for Unity. It'll take a second. It's almost there. Do, do, do. And then here we go. And you can see each of these data points here visualized is showing the three dimensions I picked out from this table, um, which are coupon amount and um, quantity. And you can see the skew in this data here by looking at it from the side angle here. So you can see a lot of these data points down at the zero, at zero value and up here. And this is pulled directly out of Trino and using the client, which I am talking about today. All right, now let's switch back to the slides and go into some details. Um, oh, and by the way, I will try to open source also that Unity work I did, but I just looking at Unity, I found that it was much more, um, it's much harder to open source Unity than I expected because <laughs> it has a lot of absolute paths. So ADO.NET, um, you just saw an example of this, uh, we have what is ADO.NET? Well, it's a bunch of standard interfaces to establish connections, issue queries, and read data back. Um, why do people use this? Because it's familiar. A lot of products require integration with it. You may already expect these interfaces to be implemented, and it is quite simple. One of the things about ADO.NET that we frustrates us all both, we both, we, we, is that you need to support connection strings. So in order to do that, we we don't just support connection strings, we also have a strongly typed property bag, which is exactly equivalent to the connection string. So everything in the property bag is also available on the connection string. Uh, authentication is also possible through the connection string, even if your library, auth library is not built in. So it will find any auth, any in the class, in the class loader, anything that any auth library and allow you to use that in your connection string. Basic things that you'd expect from this. Um, Test connection, um, which people use a lot in ADO.NET. It's off by default because it's slow, but if you want it, you can turn it on and you can turn it on for open connection. Schema support, this is a bit of a weird thing in ADO.NET. And here it really, it matches 100% what SQL Server uh, ADO um, client does as well. So get schema can be implemented in many ways. It's not a particularly strict API, but you can go for catalogs, databases, schemas, tables, columns, views, functions, and sessions, and it all works. It just, if you can, you drop this in instead of your SQL Server one, and you get the uh, full ADO.NET support. There are two types which were not supported in, <laughs> in .NET, which was big decimal and year to month, um, year to month. So we actually have custom types of this, which make it easy for you to convert those into regular decimals. But if you put this in a regular decimal, it will overflow in .NET. So it returns big decimal by default. Now, we talked about the higher level, which is this Trino connection, Trino command approach. Now there's more low level, um, the more low level API, uh, you can create a, you can create a client session object here. Um, provide a bunch of properties, and then just use this record executor to execute. And behind the scenes, it will do paging. This record executor is just as fast as the pager. Uh, the pager is currently not exposed, but you could easily expose it as well. It's not necessary. This is just as fast. And here we have a function just to build this right into a .NET data table. All right. Um, 
And then alternatively, you can use the um, record executor as an iterator. So you can simply just iterate through your rows. And I want to remark here that this type here, so when you get the type back from the record, this has already done the conversion from the Trino type into the .NET type. So whatever type you get here will be the correct type. Um, and then for um, more elaborate use cases, we support a bunch of other things. Um, expanding from this connection properties object here, which is both the same for the low level and for, for the um, ADO.NET implementation. You can specify your session properties. Um, you can pass the session object back and forth. So this session object properties object will get updated as you set system properties. So if you go set session, uh, it will come back, it will update the object, and then you can reuse it for your next query. Uh, query status notifications, because one of the most important things in clients that I really, really love is being able to know what my query progress is. And people, when, when you just get a spinner and you don't know what's happening, it can be really frustrating to make this really easy for people to both log up, log the status of the query, and also visualize it if they want to. Um, query parameter support, as I mentioned before, is here. You can set the buffer size for the client. Um, the we did the only the only change from this from the Java client in terms of configuration uh, is that it does set the server side page size to five megabytes, which I think is slightly bigger than the default. And we found that was considerably faster. Or notice, worth it. It was worth it. Cancellation token dot net um, capability is very important to be able to cancel your queries. A uh, few other features here. Um, we talked about authentication before. Um, coming with this in the in the main client, which really requires no dependencies, we have uh, JWT auth mode and LDAP auth. And then in the client Trino client auth library, which has the more depend more dependencies, I have a standard OAuth client secret implementation and a Trino Azure default authentication. But we need more. I'm just not familiar enough with all the other clouds to know exactly what is required here, but having um, some cloud-specific ones always makes it a lot easier to use um, OAuth 2. And there's some extension methods here, uh, which I think I already showed you as yes, build data table async, which allows you to use this uh, record executor to get some, um, get some, um, get the rows back into a data table. And then of course, if you want to create a data table prototype based on the schema, you can actually also pass the Trino columns into that. So it allows you really to do everything you'd probably want to do in .NET. What's next? We need more auth modes, I already said that, but the most exciting thing that needs to be added here is um, spooling uh, protocol support. So, this is critical. Uh, this will probably be the next thing for me when I started trying to open source this. I was at the point where I didn't have that fully done, but now I understand it is done to get that extra, that columnar performance on the reads, which a lot of people were asking for. Um, and then we also need to set up a build test uh, distribution pipeline on GitHub. Um, so I've had an internal pipeline for this, and now I need to figure out how to do the same thing on GitHub. We can we all work together on that. Um, and right now, the types are quite restrictive in ADO.NET, um, meaning I actually limit what types you can do use in order so you don't make mistakes, so you don't try to put a, a long into an integer or something like that. But we might want to liberalize that a bit. That's something I definitely would love the community's feedback on. Um, because it might make it more usable if you say, just give me what I want, don't tell me what to do. Um, and a really exciting news is as of today, uh, we are live on GitHub. Um, you can go to Trino DB, Trino C Sharp client, and you can start if we're ready for PRs, ready for getting some extra eyes on this for review. Um, we'd love to iterate on anything you can think of, anything you need, like to get feedback. Um, they're really excited to have this launched. And after such a, as I said, six years since we originally started looking at this, it is amazing to have it live. So please feel, go ahead and check it, check it out under TrinoDB, Trino C Sharp Client. And um, 
um, I'm looking forward to seeing what we do with it and continue our Trino journey. So thanks very much.